Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Quickies where I bring forward to you small little concepts uh, which enhance your understanding of physics especially for JE mains and JE advanced. Okay, and I rightfully call this as a fast food for thought and this is one fast food I can claim that is harmless for the students. Okay, so here we have two pro problems which are very conceptual and very uh, rarely covered in textbooks uh, but are required for understanding of how sound travels through different media both in gases and also in solids okay so at the end of the video we'll cap it off with two more practice problems which i'll answer in the further videos okay so let's go forward uh, here's the first question okay a pressure pulse of width d is produced in air let mean free path of air molecules be l then for the sound to propagate in that air what condition should be valid should d be equal to l or should d be incomparable to l both in terms of whether it is greater or lesser you're supposed to investigate and answer it okay so the idea for the condition for the pressure pulse to travel comes from the fact that any pressure wave inside any gas travels due to collisions of molecules so whether we take a, a single tone or single wavelength sound wave which is traveling it is due to the extra excess pressure uh, information that travels from one place to another place via collisions of gas molecules but the idea is that the concept of this state called pressure and the formula that we use for velocity of that sound wave which is under root of gamma p by rho is only valid if the width of that pulse right so whatever pulse width that we are looking at uh, let's suppose in this system on the left side the initial gaseous molecules are there and suddenly an information of pressure is propagating then the propagation of the information from one place to another place can only take place if the mean free path which is nothing but the average distance uh, that is traveled before the molecule collides with some something else that should be very very small in comparison to this width so that i can take a system boundary around this and consider that there are many paths that have already encountered and that information is traveling from one place to another place imagine i take the reverse of this situation where the width of the pulse is so small that you cannot even think of the collision or the information traveling from one place to another place then in that scenario the sound or the information of pressure will not travel from one place to another that is why d should be very large compared to the mean free path and also we know from ktg this is an extra information i'm giving you that the mean free path of the particles is very large compared to the average molecular distance so the mean free path is not just the distance between two molecules that itself will be very small it is uh, the average distance traveled by one molecule before it collides the collisions are not that frequent as we understand from the ktg or the kinetic theory of gases okay so this entire thing once it is uh, sufficiently taken into account that is when the sound actually travels through gas using this particular formula okay so for the first one this would be the answer and let's move forward to the second question which is even more interesting now this is the uh, sound travel in solid which can take place both in terms of longitudinal and transverse wave so you want to give it a try pause the video here try it out for one or two minutes and do come back for the explanation and also the practice problems at the end okay so long uniform rod is kept on a smooth horizontal surface a small l-shaped paper rider is placed touching right end of the rod the left end of the rod is tapped simultaneously by two small hammers right one is uh, uh, making it uh, vibrate in a transverse direction and another one is for the longitudinal vibrations this rider over a period of time will fly off in which direction is it positive x direction is it positive y or is it an angle of 45 degrees to that or at an angle more than 45 degrees to that okay so that's what you are supposed to investigate here okay so i hope you have done your attempt let's move forward one of the very important things that we need to understand in case of solid for that matter any medium for sound to travel the general formula is square root of b by rho where b which is the bulk modulus is the restoring force property and rho it is the inertial or the mass related property okay when you do that calculation for the sound especially when you are talking about the sound 
traveling through a rod in one dimension. That means a thin rod. We are not talking about bulk. Okay. So in that scenario, the velocity of sound for the pressure wave, P wave means pressure wave, which is the bulk wave or longitudinal type of motion, the value of that uh, sound velocity comes out to be root Y by rho. Whereas for the hammer, which is hitting it in a perpendicular direction, the wave travels as a shear wave. S wave is the shear wave. That one, when you try to calculate, you end up getting, it is related to the uh, coefficient of uh, uh, shear modulus, or I should say rigidity modulus, which is defined as eta in this case. So it now depends on which of these two waves travel faster uh, in, in that particular metal rod um, is uh, directly related to whether y is larger or eta is larger. And if you investigate for most metal rods, right, I have taken some standard information here, you need not know the values, but you should as a 12th class student have an idea of which is definitely bigger. Okay, so any of these solid rods that you take, right? Uh, the value of the shear wave you could see is smaller compared to the X V E X T. V E X T is the longitudinal wave in a thin rod. Thin rod is one dimensional one. Whereas this V1, it is for the bulk material. The value of this V1 would be even more larger because in engineering, you will study that this value for uh, the square root of Y by rho will be changed to Y and a combination of eta both. So we're not interested in this for this problem, but you need to know that the value of Y is larger as compared to eta. Therefore, this bulk wave or the longitudinal wave, P wave is going to travel faster as compared to the shear wave. Okay, so once you understand that, then you can go back to the previous uh, uh, problem and understand that here. So the wave that is traveling towards right and back and forth in longitudinal manner reaches this position first as compared to the wave which is traveling in a shear manner. So uh, this paper rider will experience that P wave first and therefore move towards the X direction. So the most appropriate answer here would be option A. Okay. So uh, by the time the shear wave reaches the, uh, the rider would have lost contact and therefore you will not end up getting C or D. Okay. So that's the whole idea. And let's see the practice problems for the future video. Again, on concepts of sound wave, right? So this is the first one which tries to relate the relative density variations in a sound wave as compared to the pressure variations. Okay, so comment your answer with the timestamp stamp below. I will uh, be able to respond whether you are doing it correctly or not. This is second again problem where you try to calculate or you would say um, compare the velocity of sound wave with the amplitude of the velocity variations when the sound is traveling through that medium. Okay, so which is the most appropriate answer you're supposed to mark. Please do comment your answer with the timestamp below. I'll respond. Okay, so there are more physics surgery quickies. Along with that, there are many other parallel series running in the channel. As I keep always saying, links of all these things for the new students are in the description below. Try to explore them. You will always find something that you definitely are going to uh, love in this particular channel. Okay, so uh, please do like the video. Liked videos get uh, recommended to more people. So leaving a like doesn't cost you, especially if you have uh, enjoyed the video. Please do share it. And in case you have not yet subscribed, I try to watch two or three videos and I'm pretty sure that I would be compelling you to subscribe to this wonderful channel. Okay, so thanks for staying this long. See you in the next video.